All right, clammy hands. I think I'm ready to go, but would you mind leaving me alone? And, and if you could go as well, that'd be great. And then I'll just have a little bit of, little bit of focus time. That sounds great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I'll me come luck. back to see the result. Around the world, a total of 50 million people suffer from dementia. By 2050, it's estimated that that will increase to more than 150 million. I'm Emma Keeling in London, where a new test has been developed that could help detect dementia earlier, reducing the suffering of patients and their families and saving healthcare systems billions of dollars. There is no cure for dementia, and impairment can occur decades before obvious symptoms such as memory loss. Jackie Gallagher's dad, Jack, was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's when she was 16, but she felt something was wrong much earlier. He got a bit more agitated easily, and it started to be if, if I needed him to come pick me up from a friend's house. He couldn't remember where he was going. He couldn't remember the friend. He couldn't remember the time to pick me up. Someone once said it's like the lights are on, but the house is empty. And that was really what it was like except for a few moments when he'd, you know, laugh or try to make a joke. And even then it would be more heartbreaking than it would be comforting. Jack was 66 when he died. Dementia is caused by diseases which damage the brain by causing loss of brain cells. Alzheimer's disease is one specific cause of dementia and the most common. So Jackie, do you worry about getting Alzheimer's like your dad? Yeah, I do. I wondered if you'd like to come along with me and try out an early diagnosis tool. A few years ago, I think I would have been too scared. And to be honest, I'm still very scared. Um, but I think I would like to do some testing and find out at this point. In Cambridge at Alzheimer's Research UK, Dr. Katie Stubbs tells me the estimated global cost of dementia is one trillion US dollars, and that's expected to double by 2030. So what is the advantage of early diagnosis? At the moment we treat people with dementia when they show symptoms, so when their memory and thinking problems are such that it's interfering with everyday life. So we're diagnosing people at a very late stage, similar to say diagnosing people once they have cancer throughout their whole body rather than at that earlier point. It's this knowledge of the biology that's going to be really important for this. So if we can understand what's changing and what's driving the disease, pick that up early and then create medicines that can alter that, that's going to be the best thing we can do. But if you can see those early signs, how do you treat somebody? What can you do to help them? So an example of this is a protein called amyloid, which we know builds up in the brain starting about 20 years before somebody shows symptoms. And we've created medicines that can alter this amyloid protein, but we're giving them right now to people too late, so they're not shown to be effective. Whereas if we could pick people up 20 years earlier and then treat them with these drugs, then they have the best chance of having an effect. So they might be removing amyloid from the brain or preventing it from being created to, in kind of too high quantities and therefore reducing that down, reducing the impact of that down as well. Today, Jackie and I will be tested at the offices of startup company Cognitivity. How are you feeling? Um, I'm, I'm a bit anxious, mm. but I'm excited. Hi Jackie, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wonderful. Dr. Sina Habibi is the co-founder of Cognitivity. Fill this out. Human brain has evolved to be sensitive to pictures of animals. Why? For food or fear phenomena. We either had to run away from them or run after them. So if there is an animal in the picture, we become very sensitive to it. So images are going to be flashed by for a very short time, like this one. As soon as you see a picture of animal in the image, you press on the right side of the screen. If there is no animal, you press on the left. So let's do it now. Okay. Oh yeah, I can see. Definitely. The test takes five minutes. Speed, speed, speed. Very important to keep the speed up. Factors such as lack of sleep or diet can influence the results. The test is not a definitive diagnosis tool. It indicates if there is a risk. Perfect. Let's have a look. Congratulations. <laughs> you've completed the test. Oh, very good. So this is a performance you've had, which is uh, on the healthy zone. This is the normal care of aging. And people who score in the red zone, we are uh, telling them that they are impaired and they need to be seeking uh, further assessment. This is an interesting analysis and it tells you 
how long you took on harder images versus easier images. So with that, we build a profile of responses that our artificial intelligence can use in order to classify you versus the historical data that we have. And that's a very clever part of the test. This is your performance, your accuracy, your speed, your speed maintenance in comparison to healthy uh, individuals. And you can see that you're very much in that zone. Neuroscientist Dr. Madi Halak Razavi is one of the brains behind this new technology. How did this technology come about? Because it was based on your initial research. Seven years ago, when I was doing my PhD in Cambridge, I was studying the human visual system. And I realized when we show natural images like animals to healthy human subjects, a particular part of the, in, in their hierarchy of the visual cortex is activated. This area also is one of the key areas that shows accumulation of a protein, uh, which is precursor of dementia. I then followed up that idea and designed a rapid visual categorization test, which particularly targets that brain area and a large volume of cortex, so therefore making it more likely to detect subtle cognitive impairments, ideally before the onset of memory symptoms. What happens here is... You the test is not about memory because contrary to what most of us think, memory loss happens later in disease development. So you've explained the science side. Tell me a little bit more about the AI side of this technology. So what we do here is we build a multidimensional cognitive profile for each participant uh, based on their responses. Like a neurologist who would learn by observing new patients, the AI engine has the ability to actually learn from more data. Whoa! Okay. Did you see that? Me neither. We'll slow a couple down for you. On every image you see, you either tap on the right or on the left, and both speed and accuracy matter. So the idea is, because we want to detect subtle kind of impairments, that's why it's kind of challenging. But after the first few images, you get used to it. All right, clammy hands. I think I'm ready to go, but could, would you mind leaving me alone? And, and if you could go as well, that'd be great. And then I just have a little bit of, little bit of focus time. That sounds great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wish I'll me come luck. back to see the result. Oh, that'd be lovely, thank you. All right. So she was a little bit stressed at the beginning, uh, but there is a warm-up period in the test. And after she passed that stage, she's now used to it and doing, doing it very well. I wasn't playing it up for the camera. I was genuinely nervous. It turns out I'm what's known as one of the worried well. No one wants to know they're a candidate for dementia. Don't grin Great. at me like that. Don't grin. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> it was terrifying. <laughs> I think my hands were shaking so much. I don't know. You, you sure tell me how it was. This is, this is the tricky bit. I'm very dehydrated, by the way. That could have affected my score. All right. Um, no, it's great actually. You've done a very good <gasps> job. Um, <laughs> congratulations. I can smile now. This is good. <laughs> so this is your score against uh, people of the similar age, mm. and you fall into the green bar. So that's great. Mm. So you've had a very good accuracy. My speed's a bit down, your isn't speed it? Speed is slightly slower, but the overall profile is, is that very red good. Line, Said? That's how an impaired cognitive profile would have looked like. And so you're quite further away from that. Oh, I finished. How was yours? It went a lot better than I thought it was going to. How about for you? I was absolutely terrified. Uh, my hands were sweating. I mean, you look so calm. It was really terrifying during the test, but then I started to get so focused that I sort of stopped worrying about it. And then especially after receiving the results, it was a big relief. And what were your results? I was in the green. I was in the A-OK -okay for now. How about yours? I was also in the upper green range. <laughs> does this, does it ease your mind at all? It has eased my mind in the way of getting to see these new technologies firsthand and to see the developments that they're making that can help people who have dementia or might develop dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, and it was a relief to see that I haven't shown any signs of Alzheimer's yet, but I think it could really help a lot of other people and that has eased my mind a lot to know. So you're feeling good? Yeah, I do. I think it's, it's good that technology has this capability of changing lives in such a positive way if used in the right way like this is doing.
The Cognitivity team still needs to complete the regulatory approval process, but are hopeful their technology will be rolled out in the UK's National Health Service in early 2020 and in the US later in the year. Oh, it's all finished! Oh, don't worry. We've got loads more cool science and tech stories from Razor. All you need to do is like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. See you next time.